Hey guys, it's April. I am sorry that I am so late today. I know I promised you guys a video and I am working on it, I promise. Um, I just had a lot going on today, so I have been mobile most of the day. This is going to be the tutorial on the cup box. Now it's a little bit different than what somebody requested simply because of size limitations and things like that. A lot of people don't have 12 by 24 mats or 12 by 24 paper so I wanted it m to make the file usable for everybody by using free shapes and things of that nature so that everybody could use it. And I went through some paper designing this. That didn't work so that was garbage. And then I tried something else, and it was close, but not quite, so that was garbage. And then I finally hit on one, and I'm going to keep this one, because this one turned out pretty good, and I'm actually going to use it. We have a window in it. It's going to be very nice. I did not finish this one off. This is just a prototype, but um, the one that I have the file for, you're going to see all the pieces, and it's going to be finished off. This one I'm going to keep and cut that piece for and put it in. In the file I'm going to put together two of these so that you can see the difference between using like a craft card stock or a light card stock and using the craft board from Cricut. Um, this personally guys is my favorite for making all kinds of boxes. You can get away with the Cricut cardstock on the ornament boxes or the basil. Um, I prefer Cricut because it's solid core. And what I mean by that, let me see if I can grab a piece. This is the one I cut the Merry Christmas box out of. If you look at this and you look where it's cut, you don't see any white edges right here. And that gives your cards a more finished look. Cricut cardstock is good. It's sturdy. Usually when it's on sale, you can get it $4.99 a pack, and you get 20 sheets. This craft card stock, they have craft card stock too, but I'm using this up before I get uh, the Cricut craft card stock because I want to use what I had first, and I have a ton of this. Uh, probably another 40 sheets to go. This is $5.99, and you get, I believe, I don't see my other pack here that tells me, but I believe it's 20 or 25 sheets of it. So Cricut cardstock is very economical if you'll buy it when it's on sale. Uh, I try to keep at least one pack of every color. I have everything I think except navy and that's because they've been out of navy forever. It's beautiful. Um, but the Cricut craft board is fantastic for making all of your boxes. That way they're sturdy. You can put things in them and not have to worry about them collapsing or, or folding over on you. Uh, things of that nature if you put something too heavy in them. Um, but I am, Cricut does sell the Brown Craft cardstock and it's a little bit better than this. This is the Paper Studio. Um, there it is. I have a, another one more pack of it after this. Um, and it's $5.99 and you get 25 sheets. So if you get the Cricut on sale, it's a dollar less and you get five sheets less. So it's very, very much worth it. Some of these other card stocks out there, and I will I'll just show you one, what I mean for some of you who do not know. You're going to go out there and you're going to see a pretty card stuck and you're going to buy it. But if you'll look at that edge, I don't know if that's going to show on camera. You see that white edge? Everywhere you cut, you're going to see that white edge. You can get around it by using Copic markers or a marker similar to the color of your paper and kind of making it look distressed and coloring it. That is a technique and I do do it on some of my cards. And I use expensive paper. It's patterned paper and patterned paper... 99% of the time is always going to be a white core. I don't think I've ever found any that was had a solid core to it. Um, so your pattern paper, you, you have that issue to deal with anyway. So your solid card stocks, I like to use these for my panels and for cutting words and things like that, my die cuts. That way I have that color all the way through. So that explains that. A lot of you had that question. So let's go ahead and get started putting the box together. I am going to start with this one, and you're going to have this piece. This is going to be your window piece, of course, 
and what you want to do first is I've already done one I left one here for you guys who don't know this is the acetate from Cricut I love it it's got the foil acetate um, I'm using the stripe out of this pack in my opinion this is the crown jewel on your boxes this is what's going to separate yours from other people's out there um, because you are using a better product and using it but don't forget that it has a protective coating on the back side and the back side is silver you can always flip it around and use the silver side instead of the gold side but uh, it has that plastic coating on there so when you put it on your mat it doesn't scratch it up so make sure you peel that off before you use it I've already peeled the other one and I am going to fold this in half it's set to score you can also use a plain acetate like I did in that black box right here I used just a plain scrap piece making that and it worked fine so you want to mount and fold that so you have it just like that and I'm going to do one of these at a time I believe that way you guys can see and we'll go over everything a second time just in case I stamped the top of my box with a to and from on the North Pole special delivery it's just a little it's a dollar stamp that I got at Target uh, that I I like to use I haven't taken it off the wood block to use in my misty yet so I'm just using it with the the Stampin Up ink cherry cobbler so in case any of you want that you're going to take this piece and everything on the box is a mountain fold this big tab is the side that's going to glue to the other one and this is how you this is actually the bottom of the box guys but we're going to glue it together it, I, I know it looks weird that's the bottom with this small tab and that's why I did a small tab on that one so that it would fit on an 11 and a half by 11 and a half square because that's the largest we can cut and two it separates the top from the bottom and the the it also has a hole in that one side so with the top tab up this is the top tab you have another one over here that and it has a tab on the side all of these side tabs are for gluing to the next piece so we're going to uh, hope that you guys can see this I had to get a new camera that was part of the issue with my videos this week is why I'm rushed and falling behind um, my camera wires broke and Nikon said three to eight weeks so I went and got a small camcorder and expensive to get us through so that I can do videos for you guys and we're just going to glue those together want to make sure that you get that score line even with this piece up here I think that's right I may have to I have this backwards. Uh oh. No, this is right. I may have to adjust this file. What happened last night? I was working on this at 4 a.m. and all of a sudden I had to redo this piece and it wouldn't save. And I am going to have to adjust that file. Yours will be adjusted. Oh, that's right. I did it right. It's going to look a little off right there. That's your flap. It goes to the inside, and that's why it's down a little bit. No problem. I think I still will adjust that, and I'm getting ink all over myself from that. Let me move that out of the way. I've got ink on my hands from picking up that pad, and I'm getting it all over my box. You see that? Okay. Now I've got that flap done. I'm going to do this flap. So we're going to put some glue on that one. I'm using Art Glitter Glue. I usually sell that in my Etsy shop, but I can't ship it during freezing weather. So I won't have any until spring. And then you're just going to bring that piece over and, and glue it. It's going to meet up, leaving you that hole. Actually, don't glue it yet. My bad. 
if you're following along, you want to glue this piece down. Your acetate. Go around the window. You don't need much glue. It'll, it'll stay because we're going to put a finishing piece on it. But you want to make sure that your score line where you folded is in the score line of this one. So just place that in there. Keep your score line straight. And we're just going to leave that right there. And then you have this finishing piece. And this one was a valley fold. And I did not cut this piece or this piece out of the uh, craft board because you don't need it with the craft board. You just need this finishing piece. So I just cut it out of a piece of scrap white cardstock because it's just going to be on the inside to hide where our acetate is glued down. And again, you're just going to line up the score lines in the window. Just get it laid in there. And that's going to help hold your acetate in place and make it look finished on the inside. So there we have that. Now you want to glue this tab. I almost messed up. You'd think I would remember after making three, but in my defense, it was 4.30 a.m. So, and we're just going to do that. And get that glued there. And you may need to hold this a little longer and let it dry a little bit more before you start moving it around. Let's get a good hold on it. Okay, and then these flaps will fold in. One has a bigger curve on it than the other. It doesn't matter which one you fold first, but you're going to glue this small tab. And you can, I think, probably put a little bit of glue there and a little bit here to help hold it down. And then a little bit along that edge. You don't need much. And close that part of the box up. Reach in un from underneath and press it down. And this is the first one I've made out of this craft. I hate that I got ink on that. I might be able to, to cover it. I'll put a decorative panel or something in the top and the bottom and make it look like it was intended. And then I'm just, since I it cut, I'm just going to glue it in for some reinforcement and a finishing look so that you don't see those tabs down there on the inside. I'll just put that piece in there. You will need this if you're using a regular cardstock because you don't want that a heavy cup falling through the bottom of that box or pushing through. I don't advise using tape runners such as these or ATGs because the weight of the cup when they're handling this box might make that tape break loose. So um, you don't want to have that happen to you. And then you've got your two flaps here and then it's going to close right and it's stiff it's but it's going to go it's tight if you're using the craft oh my acetate's not dry on there it's popping loose see that make sure that you're glued down good so it doesn't catch on that edge Maybe I keep popping it loose because I'm impatient and not letting mine dry. But I hate to make you guys wait on camera and make my videos go long, long, long. There we go. Just guide it with my thumb and close it up. I'm catching on the edge. If you're catching on the edge like I am, just be patient. Um, or even leave that piece off. That may be what it is because this cardstock is so thick, the craft board. If you're doing the craft board, maybe don't put that finishing piece in and that's gonna help you close it up. Like I said, this these are my prototypes that I made. This is the first one I've made out of actually good cardstock. There it goes. Now I say that it closes up just fine. And then I'm just going to decorate mine. I have a little bit of hot glue over there. I got these 
at the Dollar Tree. There were two on a card for a dollar. Because I didn't want to overdo it, I want the window and the cup inside to be the focus. So I don't want to overdress it, and I didn't want to do a tag and do this and have too much dangling, which they can always take this off and use this for a tree ornament as well. I'm just putting a dab of hot glue back there. And then I want it to be on this corner of the box. You can put yours wherever you want. There we go. Let me get this hot glue gun out of my way so I don't burn myself. Now, the next thing I want to show you guys, this cup fits in that box. This cup also fits in that box. This cup does not fit. It's too tall. It's like a latte cup. This cup fits in that box. And this cup will fit in that box. Now, this one is a little bit small on the bottom. It's uh, about three inches around in diameter at the top. So what I would do if you're giving a gift, I would put a piece of tissue at the back and put a couple of glue dots on there and put those, put it down inside the box with some glue dots to hold it. And my glue didn't hold. I didn't let it dry. Ah, I'll have to glue that again. But this cup does fit in there just like that. You can see it through the window. So if you've put something on your cup, it's going to show through. Um, this cup shows that a little bit better. So if you've got some vinyl on your cup, it's going to go in with the handle to the back. And you can see the vinyl or whatever it is you put on the cup. This one also fits. Now you can turn this. You can put your handle a different way and it just sits back further so that you can see. So just do it up your way. And like I said, this one is a little small. So if your cup is a little small for it, just bring it forward and glue dot it down in the box like so. And put a piece of decorative tissue or something back there. But this box will work for one, two, three, at least four different sizes of cups. And I am going to glue my bells back down. It doesn't want to be there, but I want it to be there, so I'm going to redo it. I had it a little heavy. So let's just put a little more glue there. And I'm going to bring these bells back over here. There we go. And that's all there is to making this box. And like I said, this one is a little more flimsy. So let's just go ahead and do all of our folds. Mountain. Since I folded the other one. This one is a mountain. Mountain or away from you, whatever you call it. And then this one, if I can see my score line, this is the bottom. This one's got the small score on it. That's the bottom of the box. Mountain, bump my camera. And mountain. And then I am going to fold this over. And I am going to go in here. I'm going to try this one a little bit different than I did the other, so you guys can learn with me. I'm putting the glue on here before I fold this piece. And I want the gold side out. And I'm just going to place that there. And then I'm going to place this piece. This is the valley fold finishing piece. And I'm going to see if we can give this one a little time to dry. Line it up in that valley. And you could do a decorative piece here too if you want. It just won't cover the whole inside of the box. I didn't make it to do that. But you certainly could. And let's just let that dry for a moment and fold this one. And 
this is the top. So if you want to stamp, now's the time to stamp while it's flat. Make sure I've got my to and from viewing. The box will be open this way, so I want to make sure that we have the tab down to us this way and stamp with it right side up. I think I'll put this one right about the same place. Doesn't have to be perfect. It's I love the craft paper because you don't have to be perfect. It's meant to to look timeless. And then you've got mountain folds on all of the folds on this, all of the scores. Can't see my score line. I had a light go out in here like minutes before I started doing the video and I was like, I'm just going to go with it and I'll change it in a moment. So we've got this. Those. One here in the, down the center. And then we have that final one. And I just want to get some glue in here. This is still lifting up and I don't want the same closure problem so make sure you get yours all the way out to the edge I did not get that paper all the way down before I fold that acetate make sure it's sticking all the way around So far, I think this camera has a clearer picture than the other one did. I'm thinking I may just stay with it. I don't know if you guys think it's better video than the others. And I'm thinking, guys, about starting maybe, if I can get my camera to show me how to go live on Facebook and show my screen, because I need it to show the screen so that we can do something I, I'm, I'm planning on doing I'm just folding this guys that's all I'm doing I just wanted to make sure that I folded it and you don't have to fold that very hard that crease will stay but I'm thinking about doing some Friday afternoon tutorials where you guys can ask questions and I can show you on the screen and and solve some of the issues that some of you may be having um, if that sounds like something you want to do just let me know and let's see, that's the bottom, that's the top. Did I mess up? I did. And I didn't. I did. I folded that the wrong way and glued it on the wrong side. No problem. Don't do as I do. <laughs> Make sure that you have your tabs to the left. Guys, I didn't do that. These side tabs are to your left. I turned one around. No biggie. It's going to have to and from on the inside. Not a problem. I'm just going to leave it like that. I just put my decoration in the center of the top. So it looks intentional. Then we're going to... Bring this in. And do that. And give that time to dry. I'm going to fold it the other way and hold it. Make sure you get your glue all the way to the edge on your boxes. You don't want any loose seams. Okay. And that would be the top and this is the bottom. Again, I'm going to fold in a flap and just put a little bit of glue 
fold in the other flap. A little glue on that. And then bring that up. I'm going to put a little on this tab. Fold it in and hold it from the bottom till it sets. If I don't push it out with my fingers. I'm just having all sorts of problems today. Doesn't always go smooth for me either, guys. I know some of you have been having a rough couple of days as well. It happens. There we go. Reach in there and hold it down until that sets. I'm just going to fold these back. Looks like I'm going to be cutting another panel for this one as well as the other. I got ink on the wrong side on that one, and I stamped this one on the wrong side. You might want to wait and stamp afterwards if you're doing like I am. And then we're just going to place this in the bottom to sturdy this box up. Keep it square and make it sturdier. And it also kind of finishes off the bottom so that you don't see those flaps. And then we just place the cup in. And I might need to make this tabs a little smaller. It does fit snug. I like that it fits snug. I'm scared to cut that and make it less snug because I don't want it popping open if you've ever had a box that did that. It's because the flaps are just too loose. And I'm going to glue this one right on the top. I have my glue gun behind me because I don't want to burn myself. And there you have it, guys. And like I said, this box is not going to be as sturdy as this box. This box is, is tough. This one's going to give a little. But it's holding the weight of that cup, and it's not going anywhere. So just make sure that you use a good cardstock. I'm going to say at least craft stock or heavier. Um, you can pick probably Basil 110 any of the Cricut craft boards, the Cricut uh, craft paper, your studio, um, the paper studio, brown craft. Did I say basil? Basil from Joann's. The heavy, not the thin ones. You want the heavy one. I think it's 110 pound. It might be 120. Your Gina K 120 will work, except it comes in 8.5 by 11 sheets and it won't fit. The box won't cut out of that. So you have to have 12 by 12 and you're going to need three sheets. So I hope that that helps you guys out and that you get a lot of use out of this. You can also do the names in there guys like you did the personalized box. You're just going to have a fold in it. Just keep in mind that there will be a fold in that name if you do that like you do the personalized box. But that would be cute and be a, a nice little match. So you guys give us a thumbs up on the video, click the uh, Crafting with April logo and subscribe to the YouTube channel. The box file is in the description below. You have to click on show more. Um, if you're on a computer you'll see show more down there. It's kind of a light gray. Click on that and scroll down you'll see the uh, box file, the design space file. If you're on a phone in the I believe right hand corner there's a down arrow, a drop down arrow, and you can access that way. However, you cannot open and load this box and design space for mobile. You guys must be on a PC to do that. Um, I know that there are some upload features, so but I don't think it will upload an SVG or anything like that, so I don't think that it will allow you to open a design space file yet. So to get the file, you have to click Show More from a computer. When you click that link, it's going to open in Design Space. You're going to do a Save As and save that uh, coffee mug box 
in your files and then you'll have it from there on out. You guys have a wonderful crafting day and I'm going to go over and start designing some other pro, um, what it was it that we had, the files, the files for the hand sanitizer, uh, also the personalized box, that's what I was trying to think of. Somebody wanted a tutorial on putting that personalized box together, not just showing how to put the name in it like we have it now, so I'm going to do a tutorial on that as well. If you guys want a to do maybe a Friday or uh, Thursday afternoon, whatever day, tell me what days work for you where we can do a live online so that um, I can get your questions answered and show you on the PC how to do some of these things, how we can design a box. We'll pick a project every week and, and do something. If that interests you, let me know in the comments or let me know in chat uh, in the Facebook group. Uh, and let's see if we can't work out something that's going to help everybody. You guys have a wonderful night, and thanks for watching.